Hi everyone, when it comes to dividend stocks, the dividend aristocrats are the holy grail and today I'm going to show you a new way to look at dividend stocks that will open your eyes. I also have a big announcement for my channel. I just started a new shared portfolio this week that means I now have two shared high growth portfolios. My first high growth portfolio was started four months ago and is up 62% and I know a lot of you wanted to see how a portfolio is built from scratch so I started the new portfolio and you can follow along and build yours at the same time. My new high growth portfolio I'll be taking from 100,000 to 200,000 as fast as I can and everything I do is based on fundamental and technical analysis. For those new to the channel we have a lot going on here and in my Patreon we have daily hot stock picks, trade alerts, growth portfolios, thousands of people talking stocks and helping each other, and you get my beast mode spreadsheets to make picking stocks easy. I've got a video that covers everything and it's linked down below. Here's a quick success story from yesterday to give you an idea of what we are doing. My account the last month has been on fire. Thanks mainly to you guys and Jerry. Trade Like a Brat was up 48% in December and we have a community helping each other to learn more and earn more. And I've got one more announcement. This week I'm running a free trial on my hot stock picks with no strings attached. Check it out on Discord if you want and try it out for free. If you want to learn how to invest then grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. Let's dive into the Beast Mode stock analysis for some side-by-side -side comparisons. Welcome to Beast Mode Stock Analysis. Today we're going over the top dividend aristocrat stocks. All right, we've got ticker ALB, which is, oh, I hope I pronounced this right, Alb Marley Corporation, AbbVie, ticker ABBV, Franklin Resources, ticker BEN, Automatic Data, ADP, Caterpillar, CAT, Emerson Electric, EMR, Cardinal Health, CAH, NUE, which is Nucor Corporation, Medtronic, MDT, and PPG, which is PPG Industries. All right, the beast mode is color-coded with blue being the most important, followed by green, and then a little lower you'll see tan. And if we look at the returns over one month, we can see our leader in this category is ticker ALB. Actually, they lead over one month, three months, six months, one year, and two year. They're killing it, and you normally don't see these sort of returns for a dividend aristocrat stock. This is really rare. In fact, most of the time, dividend aristocrat stocks do not perform extremely well whenever you compare them with high growth stocks, but there can be exceptions and you're looking at one right here. What else can we look at? The earnings and growth section tells us whether or not the companies are making money and we can expect to see much lower PE ratios here than we see in many of my other videos. For example, our lowest ones on the day are BIN at 15.68 and CAH at 15.99 and it looks like our highest one is going to be ALB at 45.45. As always, I love to look at the revenue growth, and most of these guys are down last year, although we do have a few winners. ABBV was up 23% last year, and their forecast is 37% next year, so that's a real big plus, and this is something I always look for in stocks that I'm buying. We have Ben Franklin, and they were down a little bit last year, but they're going to be up 29% next year, so that's a plus. And anybody else jump out? Not really. And then our last section I like to look at is the levered free cash flow, and that measures a company's ability to expand its business and pay returns to shareholders using only the money generated through current operations. And we've got ALB, which is a little bit in the negative, not a big deal because it's so close. ABBV, they're killing it at 37.7% and everybody else is positive. And now we're in the dividend section, and this is where I look at dividend stocks much different than most dividend investors. Let's go over the dividend yields. We've got ALB with a dividend yield of 0.95%, so less than 1%. That's not impressive, and normally for me to get excited about a dividend, I want to see it coming in at 4% or higher. We've got AbbVie coming in at 4.88%, BIN 4.61%, ADP 2.21%, CAT 2.24, and everybody else is coming in under that 4%. Our next closest one would be CAH at 3.66. But for me, what's very important is how much am I yielding on an investment? So that's my return over investment, and I like to look at that on an annual basis. If I bought this stock, I know I would make roughly 1% over a year for ALB, where if I bought ABBV, I would make roughly 5% over a year. So just looking at the dividend, this is the much more attractive stock. But for me, that's not what it's all about. I'm very very interested in what my overall yield is over a year. So I would want to look at this dividend net net one year return. And to do this, we simply look at the stock return over one year and we add it to the dividend yield. So with ALB, we could see their one year return was 131.76% and ABBV was 25%. So if we scroll back down, that's how we arrive at this number of 132% and 30.6%. So this bottom one is telling me what my return would be if I held that stock for one year and it was the same as it 
was last year. So if we looked at this, our winner on the day would be ALD at 132.7%, and we would only be up 3.62% with ADP. So I want the overall total return, and that's why this number is so important. The financials tell us about the company's operating margins, and the average operating margin on the S&P 500 is 10.8%. So if we use that as a rough gauge, we can see most of these guys are coming in above that, and we've got a few like CAH, they're really skinny at 1.2, and everybody else is looking pretty good. Then we've got ABBV at 31.1%. After that, we want to look at the balance sheet, and this tells us whether or not the company is financially stable. And the first thing I like to look at is the tattle ratio. I want to compare the total assets to the total liabilities, and normally I'd love to see that come in at two or higher, but anything above one can work. So let's just take a look at Ben Franklin. They've got a 2.323 tattle ratio, and that's because their total assets are $20.2 billion, and their total liabilities are $8.7 billion. Therefore, their tattle ratio is 2.3, and they're the best on the day. Profitability is very important to me, and I like to look at the net income margin, and the higher that number, the better, for obvious reasons. We've got ALB coming in at 11.77%, and we've got ABBV coming in at 18.16%. And if you notice, these stocks were the ones that had the highest gains year over year, and that's because more profitable companies, they tend to make more money, and the stock price often follows. If we come over here and look at a company like CAH, they've got a very skinny net income margin of 0.63%, and that's just not that attractive to me. And one of the reasons why is I wouldn't expect there to be much stock movement on a low PE company that's not making very much money. And that's phase one of the beast mode stock analysis. Now we move into phase two where we look at valuations, price targets, and analyst sentiment, and everything here is subjective. I like to look at the estimated intrinsic value, and anytime we've got a number in purple, that means the stock price is lower than the estimated intrinsic value. So with ABBV, it's currently trading at 106.36, and the estimated intrinsic value is essentially the same, 106.98. We've got bin at 2429 and the intrinsic value is 29.33 and the upside is roughly 20.73% and you can check out the rest of the numbers here but the more upside we have the better. The analyst price targets, they work the same way. So we've got ABBV currently trading at 106.36 and the analyst average mean price is 115.82. So it's a little bit higher. We've got EMR, CAH, and MDT that are also trading below those analyst estimates. We can also look at the analyst recommendations and this is just to give us a general idea of what the analysts are thinking. So our most recommended stock on the day is MDT with 16 recommendations, but I also like to look at the percentage of buy recommendations and that way we can do an apples to apples comparison and and 76% are recommending MDT. By comparison, only 35% are recommending ALB. And our last section on the day is the Piotrowski score. Ideally, we like that number to come in at five or higher. And our strongest ones on the day are ADP at seven and PPG at seven as well. Let's jump into the Weeble charts for some technical analysis. Before we jump into the charts, I wanted to give you my approach on stock market investing, and it is find a train going where I want to go and buy a ticket. So what do I mean by that? Well, when I'm looking at the fundamentals, do they look good? Is that a train I want to get on board with? Are they making money? Are they a profitable company? Do they have revenue growth? And all those fine details is basically summing up, hey, is this train going where I want to go? And the same is true on the stock charts. So let's take a look at our first chart, and we've got ALB. They're currently trading at $162.93. And when I look at this chart, is it going where I want to go? Absolutely. It's a nice upward chart, and that's what I want to see. We've got a very strong upward trend, and this is actually what I call a railroad track because it looks a little bit like a railroad track, and that defines a trend. Then our blue line is the 20-day moving average, the red is the 50, and the white is the 200. It's very common for trending stocks to trade right on that 20-day moving average line. So here it was trading above it, it came back down, bounced off it, and is going up, and it just reached a new high of $168.78. So this is a good looking chart and this is a train that I would want to get on. Our next stock is ABBV and if we look at this, they were down a little bit, they were up, they are up now. So right now, this is a train that I would want to get on, but I want to get off of it if it started going down and they're right at that 20 day moving average. And if they start trading higher, that would be a good time to jump on this train. Our next stock is Ben Franklin and we can see they've been down, up, down, and they're currently going up. Same story here. If they close above that 20 day moving average, that would be a real plus for the company and a possible time to get into it. ADP, nice upward trend here. They've been consolidating for a long time and then they broke that consolidation to the downside. In technical analysis, this is bad and this is not a good sign. So I would be waiting for them to definitely close above that 20 day moving average before I would even consider this stock. 
Our next stock is Caterpillar, and this is what I call a beautiful looking chart. It is a train I wanna get on. Notice the train tracks, everything is pointed up. It's traveling right on that 20 day moving average. It just came off of it. Beautiful looking stock, definitely one of interest. Our sixth stock is EMR, currently trading at 79.36, and they were up, down, sideways a little bit here. They're in an upward trend now. They're below that 20-day moving average, and if they closed above it, that would be a bullish sign, and then their next sign of resistance would be the previous high of 83.14. And if we're looking at the MACD, I'm not digging this too much. I'd much prefer a crossover when it's going from low to high at this point right here. This is a little bit of a warning sign for us right now. Our seventh stock is Cardinal Health, and they were down up going sideways and trending down. This is one that I would currently avoid and stay away from. I like upward trending stocks and that is not this one. Our eighth stock is NUE and they were going up nicely. They recently broke through that 20 day moving average, broke through the 50 day moving average and it looks like they're trying to recover. So I would wait for a new trend to establish before I got into this stock and a bullish sign on that would be it's starting to trend up as well as a crossover whenever this yellow line crossed over this purple line, just like it did right here, that would be a bullish technical indicator on this stock. Our ninth stock is MDT, currently trading at 116.95, and this is a better looking stock. It's going up, down, a little more down, up, down, up. So as long as it's going higher highs and higher lows, that's a good thing. It's currently in a nice trend here. So a buying opportunity would be anytime it bounces off that 20 day moving average. And in this case, we've got a little bit of a double top right here. So we would need for it to break out above that $118 and close to really be moving towards the direction we want it to go. And our last stock on the day is PPG. Looking at this much nicer looking chart. They are consolidating right now and we would be waiting for a breakout and that would be happening above this 146 line here. So I wouldn't do anything on this stock until it broke over that. And then the next resistance would be at 149.88. And the other thing we could be looking for would be a MACD crossover on the bottom. It looks like it might be setting up for that. So that's something to watch for. Hope that helps you out on the technical analysis. Here are my top three picks for today. My number three pick is Cat Caterpillar Incorporated, and in the last six months, they are up 45%. Their dividend is 2.6%, and their net income margin is 7.6%. My number two pick is Avi, and they are up 25% over the last year. They have strong revenue growth. Their dividend is 4.93%. Their net income margin is 18.2%, and they are currently priced below the intrinsic and analyst estimated values. And what's really rare for a dividend aristocrat is this stock has a high rule of 40, and their revenue forecast is an increase of 37% next year. That makes this a very solid pick and stock. My number one pick is Alb Marley. I hope I pronounced that right. And in the last year, they are up 117%, which is really rare for a dividend aristocrat. They pay a 1.01% dividend and their net income margin is 11.77%. Our question of the day is, why shouldn't I just pick the dividend stocks with the highest dividends? That's a great question. Let's say you buy $1,000 worth of a stock that pays a 10% dividend and hold it for one year. And in that time frame, the stock goes down 20%. After one year, if you sold the stock, you would have $900, which represents a 10% net loss. Now let's say you bought $1,000 of ALB that pays a 1% dividend and one year later, the stock is up 117%. After one year, if you sold your stock, you would have a total of $2,180. This is why I look at how a stock has performed and is expected to perform when buying dividend stocks. While a high dividend is great, what I'm really after is a high return on investment. And the example with ALB is based on real numbers and this is how the stock has performed for the last year. Thanks for stopping by and be sure to take advantage of the free Weeble stocks and come over and join our Patreon. We've got daily hot stock picks, trade alerts, a shared high growth portfolio, and thousands of people talking stocks and helping each other in our community every single day. And to close, here are a few more pictures of my travels from Kanchanaburi in Thailand. Peace, I'll see you later.